we talked about the importance of our thrust services, our API, yep. what Titanium X, they've hit a critical, wonderful critical mass. We think the basic tenet is share data, build apps, solve problems. So you're going to use eight APIs today. Absolutely, yeah. Right, and they're up here on the screen. Work, yep. We're going to use workflow, capture, documents, metadata, yep. our QR code API. Yep. Um, workflow was so important, we listed it twice. Yep. And, and messaging. Yeah, messaging. Yep. Messaging. Yep. Um, and you have two basic apps, right? Correct, yeah. Right. Nick, take it away. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, so I'm going to show you two things. So we, we focused on the supply chain kind of story because everybody, I think, in the room is either involved in some way of manufacturing or purchasing goods. Yep. So we all, you know, whether it's one end or the other, we're involved yeah, in I've it. I've got an important point. Way. These APIs are more, are more oriented towards our business network. Yep. Yep. So yep. if you want to uh, build an app on top of our business network, yep. uh, we're just using this as an example. It could be any of our business clouds, but we picked the business Absolutely anything, yep. So I'm going to dive into the first one, which yeah, is... Yeah, we're not up live on the screen yet. Whoa. So I'm going to dive into the first one, okay. which is about supply chain traceability. Okay. So the, for me, the value of the APIs is, is that we can give the knowledge worker a very targeted user experience. We, we let them do the job. Um, our APIs do the heavy lifting. Yep. So I'm going to jump in here and show you the first thing. So it's a very simple UI for filing documents. You wrote this app. It's published on developer.opendex.com. Absolutely. It's there today. So I'm going to go and grab a bunch of documents that you might typically capture during the, the material refinement part. This is the, the scenario here is an EV battery, manufacturing an EV battery. So I'm going to grab these six documents. So Nick, while you're grabbing those six documents, the example here is imagine you're in the cobalt business and you're, you're grabbing um, cobalt from where it's mined, maybe with a handwritten invoice, moving it to an exchange, to transportation, to a battery factory, to a manufacturer, to a finished good. And how do you do that simple supply chain um, authentication? How do you make sure you're meeting all your compliance yep. with these complicated documents? We're trying to make it Correct. as easy as drag and drop. Absolutely. Yep. So we've dragged them in. We've already. Yep. You dragged these live. They've been processed by our APIs. Yep. Live. So live. This yep. is live happening right this minute. So we've extracted the batch number. All I've had to do is type in the name for this report. That's all I've had to do. So if I go and look at some of these documents, like this sale invoice now. We're using our capture APIs, our viewing APIs to do this. On the right, we've got the metadata that was extracted from this document, and I can see the document. If I go and look at this quality uh, report over here, I can see the document. I can see that actually when it pops up, it's in German. We've used our information intelligence API to extract metadata from yep. this. Um, so a lot of the metadata is in English, but actually the document's in German. So I'm going to go and use another API to request a translation to English, and while that's happening in the background, I'm going to jump to another one, which is this bill receipt here. So this is another typical example. It's a form, but it's been filled out by hand. It's handwritten. Right at the source, here's the, yep. you know, one ton, the truckload of coal, raw coal bar. Exactly. As so I can look at this document, and I can see, again, we've managed to extract all of this information correctly. So really easy. If I jump back and, and, and select this document now, the, the English translation that's there, we see both documents side by side, the mm -hmm. German and the English. All I've had to do was fill in a name, nothing else. Our APIs are doing the heavy lifting. So that's the, the, the kind of capture part. So the knowledge worker can file this stuff really easily. I save that. It's gone into one of our intelligent workspaces, though. So I've got Aviator in here, just like you've already seen from Mark. And if I just reload this screen, it's not going to work. OK, it's a live demo. It's a live demo. <laughs> Look at that. And proving it's a live demo. Proving it's a live demo. Yep. So I have no idea what we do now in that scenario. Let's do a new private window, and we'll jump back in here. <laughs> it's OK. Let's see if we can get back in. Yeah. You should ask me to log in. This is live, absolutely live. Yeah, take your time there. Oh, I chose to do the, um, the live demo. All right. It will work. It will work. So let me quickly go and grab those documents again. You'll see how quickly we can do this when we're not talking over the thing as yeah. well. Yeah, so we're, we're, you're just going to just gonna jump to summarizing the document. I'm going to jump straight yeah. to summarizing the So we're the reloading document. all the documents. They're being processed. Right, go all through our APIs. You see how quickly Don't they're being... Don't translate it again. You see how quickly yeah. they're being processed. I hit save. We keep our fingers crossed, and we trust that the, the workspace appears, which it does. So I can click on Aviator. I accept the there warning. You go. Yeah. And I can type in 
what was the cobalt? Where was it sourced? Where was it refined? Yep, what so was you the do purity? A summary doc. And I want the timeline. So I submit that question to Aviator. And again, it reads through all the documents. It brings back to me all the relevant information I've asked for within a few yeah. seconds. So, so let's pause right there. We took what is typically a very complex bespoke process on the business network of go from source to finished product and show me the supply chain traceability. In the simplest form of it is just bring all your documents to our workspace, whether it's a handwritten form, yep. whether it's, it's an invoice yep. um, at the, at the uh, bill, bill of lading to the factory. Correct. Um, yep. We brought it together. We, we used our APIs for yep. metadata and vectorization and used AI to give a summary. Exactly. Let's get on to the second demo. So the second yep. demo is Thank really you. around. And good recovery, Nick. <laughs> Round of applause for Nick and the recovery. <laughs> well done. So, so the second thing I want to show you is, is a different scenario which is around consumer confidence and brand protection. Sure. So this is using our GPASS platform and the GPASS APIs and our metadata APIs as well. So I'm going to do two things. One is as a consumer. So I'm going to bring my, my phone up. So on the screen, we see two QR codes, which will typically be applied to, to, to goods. So I'm going to scan with my, my phone. Could be a battery or a sneaker. Exactly. Yep. So we'll do the battery first. So they're both valuable items. These are our GPASS APIs that so, many customers are using today. So I scan the QR code, and it brings up another custom UI that I'm going to fill in, and I'm going to just autofill my contact details. It's not on the screen, your phone. Is it supposed to be on the screen? It's on the screen behind us. Oh, it's right there. Thank you. <laughs> I'm looking this way. <laughs> so I have my, my phone hey, number. Me. Hey, Nick, it's on the screen. <laughs> I have my, my phone yeah. number because I don't particularly want to broadcast it to everybody. But I'm going to fill in and yes, accept that I'm, going, I'm consenting for further communication. When I hit register, it calls our GPASS API to validate is it genuine, and it stores our warranty information in our metadata API. So thankfully, it's a genuine battery. And if I click next, I can see the battery passport information. So great. So if I close that, you'll also see I've got a new message. So I've got immediately a confirmation using our messaging API that my, the, baron, the, the battery warranty is valid until November 2025. Simple as that. All worked in the background. Yep. So. <laughs> so I'm going to scan the second one, though, just to show you what happens when you and register. This is one of our API services, our, uh, our, our, our digital twin of a physical product, yep. and an, uh, uh, and our GPASS and QR code APIs. Correct. Yep. So, so with, with something like sneakers, typically what, what counterfeiters will do is they'll take a genuine QR code, replicate it thousands of times, and apply it to the counterfeit goods. So this time I go to register this as a consumer, and I get back, sadly, the confirmation that it's not a genuine product. Mm. Okay. Yep. Okay. So the counterfeiting and fraud is is unfortunately um, prolific. Absolutely. Yep. So so that's the consumer side of it. But what else can we do with all that data that we've just captured? So I'm going to go back to the home screen and show you the third part, the final part of what we built, is a simple dashboard on top of that data that we've just captured. As if you're a brand manager. As if you're a brand manager. Okay. So it's exactly the same data, but just a different view of it. So I can see now a chart, and I can see the details of, actually, I've just registered two things. These are live, the things I've just registered, one successful, one not successful. And if I click on that top one, I can see that actually um, this, this product here, there's a, a whole bunch of these around the Las Vegas area that have been registered. Mm. So We were practicing yesterday. We've been practicing <laughs> the, what, all weekend. <laughs> So, so, but what it means is, as a brand manager, I can now dispatch uh, an investigator to Las Vegas and find out what's going on and shut down that counterfeit operation. Nick, thank you very much. World's best recovery in a demo. Nick, Thanks, thank Mark. you very much. <laughs>